Scripture says that before Christ returns, the man of lawlessness will try to turn the world against God. Because a Christian is someone that's repentant of their sins and doesn't support sexual immorality. Hey, okay, 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 okay. Stop talking to me, sir. Have a nice day. <laughs> now, what's interesting, the scripture says that the spirit of the Antichrist will not only come and grow in the future, but it says that it's already in the world. It's been around for centuries. So, is there a way to pinpoint that spirit and see if it has grown to full force today. What you are about to see will be interesting. The spirit of the Antichrist. Well, let's talk about it. After the release of our Unmasking the Antichrist documentary, we took some time to read all of the comments. You see, we know that many of you also have a gift when it comes to research and Bible prophecy. And the Holy Spirit allows you to share that. And a few of you um, shared some very interesting points in the comments about the Antichrist spirit. You see, unlike God, Satan doesn't know everything. He doesn't know all the details of Bible prophecy. In fact, many made the point, and I would agree, that certain things are hidden from Satan, such as when the second coming will happen, such as the generation of the two witnesses, and perhaps the exact timing of when the man of lawlessness is to come. And so it would seem, as many of you noted, that if Satan does not know exactly when the second coming is, that he would try to use any potential antichrist host to fulfill the prophecy of him rising and having the world worship him for three and a half years. He knows about that. The book of Daniel wrote about it. So even before the New Testament, he knew that there was going to be a time where he was going to have world domination and power for three and a half years. And so there is this likelihood that he's looked at every candidate possible and said, OK, let me see if I can work with that guy. And so it's interesting that when you look throughout history, you will see people who were seemingly possessed by Satan to do many of the things that the Antichrist is supposed to do. So could it be that Satan tried to use them, but since it wasn't the right timing, they weren't as successful as the Bible says the Antichrist will be. But eventually he will find someone to use in the future. And that person will be the man of lawlessness as described in Second Thessalonians by Paul. And so that's something to consider. I mean, if you made that point, I think it's very uh, thoughtful. And in our recent documentary, which if you haven't seen yet, you need to go and see that because we are talking about things right now that will become much more clear if you see that. But yes, in that documentary, we did look at Nero and there were so many parallels between Nero's life and how the Bible describes the Antichrist. You just really can't deny them. Um, anyone who watched the documentary from start to finish clearly saw the parallels. Even his name is easily calculated um, as 666, both in the Latin and the Greek version of it. Uh, he persecuted believers for the same time frame that the prophet Daniel said they would be persecuted for by the Antichrist, three and a half years. And there were a lot more other parallels um, that the documentary explored. Um, so yes, Nero uh, was certainly a type or a prophetic parallel of what will come in the future. And so when it is written that the Antichrist spirit is coming, but already is at work, I don't think it is too far fetched to say that the same spirit that will be in the man of lawlessness is the same spirit that was working within Nero. But seemingly, when the Antichrist spirit takes hold of a host, a, a person, you will see a certain pattern. You will see them trying to persecute God's people and you will see something happening with them around a three and a half year time frame, it seems. Is there anyone else in history who Satan might have observed and said, hmm, this guy looks like a good candidate for the man of lawlessness. Perhaps I can use him. 
well, some did note very interesting parallels with Adolf Hitler. Very similar to what the Antichrist will do, Hitler was preparing the world to basically worship him. And he studied Nero and even had a Nero decree as a form of self-defense. Also, like Nero, Hitler had ties to Rome. If he was successful in world domination, he would have globally launched the Third Reich, which aimed to be the successor of the Holy Roman Empire. And this is why, just as the Romans were known for having the symbol of the eagle, the Nazis carried that over and used the same thing, the symbol of the eagle. And so some do suggest that perhaps the nations that will be influenced and used by the Antichrist spirit will somehow have an eagle symbol attached to them. And if so, then perhaps it may be worth looking at what the eagle represents in the book of Revelation. But that's another subject. Now, also, of course, Hitler was obsessed with destroying the Jewish nation. And you know, they are included in God's olive tree, you know, the Jews and the Gentiles. In fact, this is interesting. From the moment Hitler began massive camp exterminations up until the point when they were liberated, you had a time frame of roughly, guess how long? Three and a half years. So you see these, these patterns again. Hitler came close to people worshiping him, right? He came close, but he didn't pull off what the Antichrist will pull off. Let me give you an example of how the Antichrist will likely do it. Remember Kennedy? You know, he was greatly admired and respected. And sadly, at the height of his leadership, he was assassinated. Now, imagine what would happen if after his assassination, he somehow had come back. If that had happened, that admiration people had for him would have turned into worship, easy. And so many scholars note that the Antichrist will likely do something similar, and they cite references uh, for that point, uh, that he will stage some type of assassination, and after it, he will seemingly come back onto the scene, and then he will be worshipped. Satan would likely see that, and then the same spirit that was likely influencing these characters in history will take possession of him and he will begin doing what the man of lawlessness is said to do. Now, we have to talk about Nero a little more because if you watched our latest documentary, it is clear that a lot of what was going on with him was more than just typology. It was more than just a spirit influencing him. Nero seems to be more connected in what will happen in the future as well. And I don't wanna spoil everything, so you do need to watch that documentary, but there is something that someone shared in the comments that we just gotta look at, it gets deep. So, the mark of the beast, we looked at how in many commentaries, it is mentioned that uh, largely the Greek translates the mark of the beast as uh, what, 666, right? But then there is this ancient textual variant that many scholars have been talking about. And in that variant, it is written as 616. And when you look up Gematria for Nero's name, you will see that it can be calculated, ironically, not only as the 666, version of it um, but also even in the latin variants the 616 even though it wasn't written in hebrew those who were reading it were of hebrew origin and knew that if you use letterings and their numbers you could easily calculate a number from someone's name and 666 and 616 works for nero now the interesting thing that was brought up in the comments is this 666 right and 616 what if god gave a clue in the verse that the mark of the beast would one day be translated as 666 and also 616. Well, the verse that says the mark of the beast is 666 is what? Revelation 13 
18. Well, it was mentioned that when you add 6 and 1 and 6 together, you get 13. And when you add 6, 6 and 6 together, you get 18. Revelation 13, 18. They both 666, 16 and 66 six, add up to Revelation 13, the very verse that was talking about it. Someone posted this and I was like, wow, is it is it what is this, another coincidence? It's interesting. And it's one of those things that allow you to think, hmm, is God showing us something here? Now, regarding Nero, after that documentary, over twenty thousand of you voted. Twenty thousand. And 52% said that you believe that the spirit that was within Nero will somehow return and use the man of lawlessness. 29% believe that his spirit and body will somehow emerge again. And if you watch the documentary, you will see why many uh, lean that way, because there are just many things going on even today that make it understandable why uh, people could could see that happening especially when you look at technology, which we're going to talk about in a second. In the documentary, we explored what was going on with some of these tech companies, such as CERN, and how gateways to other dimensions are being explored. And we saw also how there's this sinister uh, tunnel opening ceremony. And it took place on June 1st, 2016. And again, someone in the comments noted that June 1st, 2016. That's literally, if you look at it, 616. <laughs> we didn't realize that, but some of you commented and, and pointed that out too. And uh, something else someone mentioned. This is very interesting. Um, so, and, and we didn't know about this. So remember how um, in the documentary, we talked about how there is a lot of predictive programming in the media these days about dark entities crossing over through portals, especially in the Marvel movies. Uh, well, I, didn't, I was not aware of this, but someone commented that if you were to read the Marvel comics, the name of the universe there where these portals and things are happening is called Earth 6 one six <laughs> you just cannot make this stuff up and so there is a lot of depth in that documentary and you know you have to dig deep and you know i'm seeing things that we didn't realize at the time you know you watch it again and you new things pop out and so i do want to say this when it comes to portals uh, for those of you who haven't seen the film, um, in short, there is a part there that explores how the Bible says that the two witnesses, of course, will be given power. And when that happens, the beast or the Antichrist will rise and fight against him and that he will come up from the abyss. We also see other references uh, to the Antichrist coming up from this abyss. And so there is a discussion around current technology being used by fallen angels to open gateways to the abyss. And so I know it, you know, it may sound kind of like conspiracy theory, but, you know, these are things that we are starting to see unfold when it comes to technology. You know, this this push towards breaking the veil of this uh, dimension and very important. We also looked at how the age of Nero was around the same messianic age when he died. And some wondered if when the Antichrist manifests, if he has to be on the scene at a certain age. And I just want to want to address that. Um, I lean towards him not having to be a specific age, because if the Antichrist spirit of Nero were to enter the man of lawlessness, well, Nero already qualified for that false messianic age in his lifetime when you look at the pattern. And so that same spirit, I would think, could possess someone of any age. And if what I'm saying now doesn't make any sense, it's because you haven't seen the documentary yet. Go watch it and then all of this will come together. Another thing I want to uh, bring up, uh, one of the main comments that was shared over and over and over again 
is how the idea of, you know, the spirit of someone who once lived entering someone else, you know, you know, is, is it's not uncommon in the Bible. Uh, many of you mentioned how Elijah lived, right? And then John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And so this idea of the Antichrist coming in the same spirit that existed throughout the ages, it's not foreign when you look at it from that perspective, you know, these types of things that are scriptural. And I think, you know, when we look at CERN and tech companies that are now dabbling in trying to find this God particle and exploring the fabric between dimensions, there was, was a lot there when we uh, looked at what they're doing. As you can see, this is why many believe that technology will play a part in the end times. And in the documentary, we pointed out how the beast will rise up out of the abyss and how that scripture did say that he was alive, but will rise again. And when you look at the poll, most of those who believe that Nero or someone from the past, like Nimrod, uh, could return some way, most of those who have that perspective, they don't refer to it as some type of reincarnation or something. No, many of these comments actually argue that somehow cloning technology could be involved to achieve such a thing. So many people commented that for people like Nimrod or, or Nero who once existed, all you would, all you would need is a sample of their DNA and modern tech has the ability to clone it. And that would provide the perfect host for Satan to possess with his antichrist spirit. And so all I ha have to really say to that, I, I actually think it's a, um, it's a good argument. It's a good way of thinking um, because indeed, you know, we now live in a day where all of the stuff that was written in the Bible about the antichrist technology today can, can make it happen. If the Antichrist is among us today, which I believe you will soon likely see is the case, there is a great chance that he may already be above the false messianic age. He may have been here already for decades. But if you look at his DNA, there is a chance that it will match a dark figure from the past. The technology today can achieve such a thing. And speaking of technology, we certainly do live in an interesting time, you know. You know, there's been a lot of talk recently about transhumanism and how that's on the rise, how the, there's going to be this merging of the artificial with human biology and people are accepting it. Why? Because tech is now offering the possibility of immortality. Can that play a role in what we will see with the Antichrist? Something to think about. But yes, there are many people lining up, preparing themselves to live immortal. And for example, look at what Kushner has to say about that. The one thing I've tried to put a priority on since I left the White House was, you know, getting some exercise in. I think that there's a, a good probability that my generation is hopefully with the advances in science, either, you know, the, the, the first generation to live forever, or the last generation that's going to die. And so the last generation that's going to die. And so uh, we need to keep ourselves in, in pretty good shape.